A sequence of transformation is just kind of putting all of our transformations together. It just means more than one thing is happening. So in this case, if I look and think about all of my transformations, right, reflections, we know reflections, rotations, translations, and dilations. Dilations are the only ones that change size. All the rest of these are going to stay the same. So reflections is a mirror image or a flip. A rotation is a turn. A translation is a slide. And a dilation is getting bigger or smaller. Okay. So in this case, I can definitely say that this is not a dilation because my new shape is the same size as the original shape. Um, it is also not a rotation because A is on top here and A is still on top here. C is at the bottom, C is at the bottom. So nothing was turned in any kind of way. So I'm looking at reflections and translations. I do notice that B is further from the axis than, um, than the rest of them on this side and then B is further from the axis on this side. So it looks like this might be a reflection. So if I do, if I reflect this shape, across the x across the y axis d is 2 away so d prime would be 2 away a is 1 2 3 away so 1 2 3 okay b is 1 2 3 4 away so it'll be 4 cuz remember basically the only thing that happens is the sign changes this goes from being at negative 2 to being at positive 2 so it looks like a reflection across y got us close to where we want it to be, but the reason this is a sequence of transformations is because it looks like I have to do a second transformation to get this where it needs to be, and it looks like that I still need to translate it down one. So it looks like we're reflected across y, and then we are going to translate down one, one unit. And that would move everything down one. And once I can map one shape onto another, that's how I can prove that they are congruent or the same shape. Because I turned this shape into this one without changing the size of it. I just moved the location. So the trick here is just figuring out where the location is. So sometimes, so now let's look at this next one. Okay, so same thing. Let's bring this with us. All right, so the question is, how do I turn this shape into this shape? So the first thing I notice is that this has to be a dilation because my new shape is definitely smaller than my original shape. And so I notice that this is one, two long, the line from A to B. The line from A to B down is down here, and it's only one long. So remember, we do new over old, so one over two is my dilation. So this was dilated by one half. And so if I dilate all of these by one half, that'll bring B here, because it goes from 2, 2 to 1, 1. This will go from 2, 4. Again, dilated by one half means divided by 2. So that'll turn into 1, 2. And then this point, which is at 4, three is going to, if I cut that in half, that'll go to two and 1.5 or one and a half. Okay, so that's the dilation. All right, and so now I can see that they're the same size. And so that was point B, this was point A, and then this was point C. So now it looks like A went from being here to being here. So it looks like that might be a rotation. All right. And so remember how we rotate. The way we rotate is we take the point, like this point right here that's at one, two. We change the sign of y and we put it first, negative two, one. Oh, and look, that puts us right where we need to be. So it looks like this is a dilation by a factor of one half and then a 90 degree rotation.